For some people, this will open their eyes. Number two, for most people, is that's a really okay, important issue that people just don't understand. Number one is sounds boring. Most people think it means okay, drink a lot. Today, we got this guy on my podcast. Best parasite killer. Number two, anise oil. Number one, mix of honey and papayas. Let's follow for more. Fabian Kovalik, aka Exiled Medic. He went to med school, realized this is not it, and is now pursuing the goal to heal the world. He has to share some fascinating insights about becoming or staying healthy. And considering the importance of focused work and concentrating as a poker player, I decided to reach out to him and have him giving our community tips to improve our performance. And if you struggle with bad sleep, lack of concentrating, brain fog, fatigueness, I urge you to not only watch this episode, but also check out his content. So let's not wait and get right into the episode. Fabian, thank you so much for taking the time. Today we're gonna go very deep into for sure nutrition, but we're also going to be covering some other topics. So yeah, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you very much, Ben, for the invitation. I'm uh, really excited to be here and discussing with you about nutrition and how to make it practical for the people. That's kind of my goal, right? Like my whole mission right now is he healing the world is, is how I call it. But mm -hmm. uh, I feel today we should really focus on empowering the people in your community and supporting them in really giving the best performance, but also living their best life. That's kind of my, my wish for this, yeah. for this episode. I mean, your Instagram has been popping off and I've seen since it's a topic I'm interested in, it didn't take long until I got your videos on my feed. And mm. I have to say the, the way you manage to share so much wisdom in such a short period of time is truly an art. Mm. Is it something it took you a long time to get into it or did you just figure it out right from the start? So to be completely upfront, I started my social media journey in 2015 already. I was a YouTuber back then in the fitness scene. Okay. Uh, I was I was quite young back then. I had a little bit of a different topic, but since then I've kept revisiting, kept trying, and uh, just kind of re refined my art. And uh, yeah, this time I just decided not waste any time, nothing personal, n no bullocks, just give people the, the question and the answer. That's kind of mm -hmm. the, the style that I tried because people, they they don't want to wait for uh, forever for yeah. the information, and they they are they are tired of reading long long essays about whatever is happening. They just want a quick quick fix, and even though upfront I have to say that not everything can be a quick fix. Uh, for many things, there yeah. actually are quick fixes that we don't traditionally learn in in university or in mainstream media, right? And I think that's kind of the, the second just to the success on social media of my channel is that I'm not only providing the, the quick answer, but I'm also providing answers that are natural, natural remedies, answers that maybe you have heard from your grandma, but you've not heard on, on mainstream advice anymore. Yeah. That's, that kind of makes it very interesting. I understand. What is your story? What, what happened? Where was the turning point that you said, okay, instead of fitness, or other topics, this is what I dedicate my life towards is here something happened in your life or what, what, what was it that made you decide to go down this route? So to, to make the story, story very short, I started the whole journey when I was nine, my dad died unexpectedly oh, okay. from a medical error. Like they, they treated his cancer the wrong way and he died. And back then I already was like, okay, uh, I need to go down this path. He was a doctor as well. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going down this path. Um, I had that bug already. Like I knew when I was nine, I'm, I'm going to go there, right? Mm -hmm. When I was 18, I actually studied as much as I could in school to go to med school and I started studying. And I realized what I was studying there was not what I hoped for, mm -hmm. right? Like I had one hour of nutrition education in my schedule, one hour. And, per and I, week or per month or? One hour. And that hour was part of a bigger class curriculum called physiology. Per, uh, uh, for the it. whole semester, one hour. For, for the whole semester, and that was Jesus. everything I learned in my med degree about nutrition. That's why doctors, doctors are great and important people, but yeah. doctors have no clue about nutrition. You have to, yeah. you have to realize that at least in Germany, is, is this is the way it is, right? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. It, 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 this shocked me because I, I knew somehow, okay, nutrition is is a part of the equation, and preventive medicine is part of the equation, and I myself was suffering back then, right? I had asthma, I had acne, terrible acne still with 18. I was overweight, 
And I had allergies. I had food allergies to apples and to hazelnut. And I had allergies to all kind of pollen outside, to berg and all these different different roots and grasses and stuff. Yeah. And I, and I realized I would never find the answer in med school. Right? Yeah. So I kind of I kind of set out on a journey to I kept studying. I, I kept staying in that in that system. I was like, OK, I'm still going to continue. But I kept learning on my own and I kept educating myself with other books, with other influential people in all that area and that kind of started a, a bug in me because I, I realized those problems i was facing there is ways to cure them i, I honestly i had an apple allergy and, and these days every day you can ask my wife every day i eat two apples like i, I cured that allergy it sounds kind of crazy but these days in 2024 we know there is actually a therapy called auto oral immune therapy and people in tel aviv they're researching that but 10 years ago, there was Bullocks. You would have called me a hoax, right? Mm. And uh, that made me kind of set out on a journey to to stop with the traditional system. Then I decided to swap my path. I started a master's in nutrition. I actually have a master's degree in nutrition, made it then. And I started con coaching, consulting people, worked as a nutrition coach, and really kind of helped people that way. That's kind of the, the journey I went on. Yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that about your dad. And uh, yeah, I made the same experience with doctors as well um, that I felt like they're not really knowing anything about nutrition and also about the whole holistic approach in the body. So whenever I went to traditional doctors that are covered by the governmental health care, it was just if you have a problem with your head, you go to a head doctor. If you have a problem with your teeth, you go to a dentist. But when you actually go to private clinics that let's call it only the rich can afford, they will look into everything. You have, mm -hmm. for example, I had a migraine for a very long time. They checked everything and they actually figured out it is caused by a dead tooth that a dentist said, told me it's fine to leave it in. Mm -hmm. But in the private clinic, they told me they release so many toxins in your body. You need to take it out. Yes. And it Crazy. has not completely cured it, but I had migraine attacks, I would say once every 10 days, like really heavy ones. I could not even look in light. I need to be in a dark room. Um, so they took it out, but a dentist would say, no, it doesn't cause any harm. And I'm wondering why in the private clinic where you, yes. And, and this is also what makes me sad because I know normal people cannot afford that. It's just not, and why is it not covered by traditional healthcare. Also in Germany, um, I think it's called amalgam fillings yeah, for a very a long time. Huge and thing. When, you, when you look a little bit into that, and I uh, also had a very good dental clinic in, 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 it's, uh, in, in, uh, in Vienna. I used to live in Vienna. And they yeah. also approached it more holistic. She looked into my teeth like I had amalgam fillings left and right. I literally had a chemical bomb in my mouth. No. And they had to use this huge vacuum device when they re release the amalgam filling so the toxins are not released into the air. And I was like, why do you need all these devices? Because she said it's super toxic and you have it in your, in your mouth the entire time. And there is no surprise that. And then she also, she explained to me that this causes all sorts of problems in your body. So you might have problems in other parts of your body and you go to a dentist that checks it, but if he's not looking into your teeth or somewhere else, then you're gonna run around with these issues for the entire life. Yeah, yeah. Fun fact, there's no safe limit for mercury in the human body. And what do these amalgam fillings do? They leach mercury constantly mm. for the whole life. Like they leach it through your nasal oral way, down your mouth, down your body. And your, the mercury just accumulates in your body. There's we have some ways of getting rid of it with the liver and bile, but in general, the amount is overwhelming with the fillings. I actually found a, you have to be lucky there. I found a dentist that is more holistically and he would never do amalgam fillings. Like he, he knows patients that had them for 30 years that had massive neurological issues based on those fillings, right? Yeah. In the short term, they cause stuff like migraines, but in the long term, that can cause a lot more trouble down the way. Permanent brain fog, permanent depression, neurological actual disabilities it's crazy but i mean i, I don't want to hate on the medical system right i don't want to be yeah. that kind of person it's it's not their fault i don't see it as the the doctor's fault 
Yeah. You have only seven minutes as a general practitioner for every of your yeah, people yeah. that you see. Seven minutes. That's all you have to figure out their whole body. But our body is, you, you can't fix a body in, in seven minutes. So it's kind of uh, an issue of the whole healthcare system in general and not the, not the practitioners. But yeah. that's the way we live in. We need to take care of ourselves. That's kind of the, the answer. <laughs> that's true. So I'm, I'm on your side. Uh, I also don't want to hate on doctors or the medical system. It has its, uh, its, its benefit as well, but I think we need to challenge the status quo. We need to challenge the way certain things are, um, are treated. And I'm not a big fan of making claims. I'm not a big fan of you have to do certain things, but I'm a big, big, big proponent of asking questions. And I challenge everyone, ask for yourself, look at your circle of friends, how many problems they have or even for yourself that whether it's migraine whether it's pain whether it's brain fatigue sleep issues um allergies things where you might say you were, because people always say oh the the techno technological advancement medic it has improved over the decades so much i want to say so many of the shit we have today we haven't had 50 years ago so That's obesity issue. increased these allergies, a lot of uh, diseases we have today, we haven't had them 50 years, and it doesn't take you long to research that. Look in, in my circle of friends, I have friends that um, also mistreated uh, diseases and problems. Um, everyone has some, like I had my migraine, someone else, constant headaches, brain fog, fatigue and tiredness, fatigueness, um, allergies, and actually the way technology has advanced also, also medical healthcare, shouldn't it go upwards and i feel like we're going downwards it's getting worse with all these small problems it's not like we have these are uncurable diseases so this is just something that i challenge everyone just to to to, to think for yourself and something must be wrong yeah, yeah, I really like that perspective. And what I noticed also, if you scroll around social media on Instagram and stuff, every once in a while you see these giga viral posts of people telling to the camera, yeah, guys, I've been feeling sick for a few weeks. Do so you also feel that? Or I've been having brain fog for the last month. Does somebody also notice? And yeah. that's, I think that's one of the most relatable things that get posted on social media because everybody suddenly feels it. Like we have a massive crisis of people with brain fog, with fatigue, with these things. But you don't really talk much about it. You, you just think maybe that's normal. Maybe there's yeah. something wrong with me, not the system. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm at fault. Maybe I'm not doing the right things. But like, I, I would not take the blame for that myself. It's, it's issues around us. The, the kind of problem is it's not super easy to figure out what is going on. It takes a little bit of effort. Like that brain fog, as you said, it could be something like your amalgam fillings. It could be something related to your hydration, to how much you drink. It could be related to your diet could even be related to the constant EMF and all the frequencies, radio frequencies, Bluetooth headphones. Like there's a few different areas you have to kind of explore. So you have to spend some time on yourself if you want to live a healthy life. Yeah. Maybe that's the, 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 the bad news for the people. <laughs> you have to spend some time on it, but it's fun. I can encourage everybody to, to start on the health journey. You learn so much about yourself and you can benefit from this for the rest of your life. Like however long you live, if it's 40 years or 60 years, if you know why you get something and what you can do, this is knowledge nobody can take from you. It's it's the best thing you can spend your time on. Yeah. I just see you're drinking tea, um, <laughs> no coffee. I think uh, coffee is a good example for, for some people it's really bad and for some people they don't care at all. It doesn't bother. Yeah. My fiance, she can have a coffee at 8 p.m. She can fall asleep at 10. If I have a coffee past four, I'm gonna be awake for almost half of the night. So, and also I'm very, very sensitive to caffeine. Um, so I think you have a lot of things that are very individual, um, yes. but I think there are a lot of things that are mandatory. They're not neg 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 negotiable. It's the basics, you need to get them right. What would, you, what would you consider are those basics? Whereas like, if you got them right, may, not even perfect, but solid, but you need to pay attention to them. What is it mm. that you would say? To people so 
First of all, one interesting fact, you just mentioned this coffee mm -hmm. and th there's two things I would like to mention about it. The first thing, you're completely right. People are individually. And yeah. why is there an individual response? It's the cytochrome P450 complex, which is like the master enzyme thing. And it sounds complicated. It's not. For some people, it's more active. For others, it's less active. Okay. For, for you, for example, it's less active. That's why coffee stays in your system longer. Mm -hmm. For your wife, it's more active. That's why she can build it. Soon. Put up away the coffee soon. soon. <laughs> oh, oh, soon wife, She's going to be happy if she it's, watches the podcast. Congratulations. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Um, and that's the one equation. But yeah. the, the cool or interesting fact is you can change that. Mm -hmm. If you would eat a grapefruit and then drink a coffee, that coffee would hit you like a buck. You have no idea. That would stay a lot longer in your system because what does grapefruit do? It inhibits this enzyme P450. On the other hand, if you would eat a, a ton of broccoli, then you would build away that coffee a lot sooner because what the sulfur offense do in the broccoli, it increases this enzyme system. So on one hand, we have the individual response. And on the other hand, you also have the ability to influence this. So it's, this is kind of the, 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 the yeah. crazy part about it, right? Like you, you also still, you can still do something with it. But back on the topic, coffee, I think most people are overrating the health benefits and don't Agreed. realize that it also stresses you out, drops you off Agreed. sleep. Yeah. We have a cortisol epidemic. Like most yeah. people are stressed all the time. They can't sleep. Their brain fog. We don't need to release more adrenaline from our adrenals all the time with mm. the coffee. So that's just back on the topic. I definitely agree. We also used to actually have a podcast here with a coach where we just dedicated an entire podcast to coffee with Coach <laughs> cool. Baman. Check it out, guys. <laughs> he dedicated his lives to reveal the myth around coffee. I mean, Crazy. at the end of the day, <laughs> very often it's basic stuff. An overload or overproduction of cortisol, and this happens when you drink a lot of coffee, is simply not good, period. It's just the problem I see is that people sending those studies and papers. Oh, coffee has these health benefits. Yeah, the thing is, a lot of these health benefits you find in plenty of other foods. You don't need to drink coffee to benefit from these health benefits. And on the other side, get all the negative stuff as well. There's a lot of fruits, vegetables, where you probably can get the same benefits without the cortisol uh, release or the amount of cortisol, cortisol release you, you go through when drinking coffee. So yeah, completely agreed. We're not trying to forbid it, right? Just be more mindful about it. I think I'm doing uh, from time to time an entire coffee detox, like a week or two weeks not drinking any coffee at all. Then I have some coffee, then I'm off it. Because I also experience for myself that it's just simply not that good. And I feel better and more relaxed and happy and more productive when I'm off coffee. Mm -hmm. I, I completely relate to you both for the health benefits, but also with the coffee detoxing. Yeah. T to be fair, I'm not, a, I'm not an apostle or a, or a fanatic. I also drink coffee sometimes, right? Yeah. I enjoy the taste. If I'm in a good area, if I'm in Italy, then I will drink a, have, have a cup of coffee or, or even two espressos, right? And I like the productivity boost. Actually, one one interesting fact here, maybe also for your community, if and this is something I used to do always in med school when I was studying crazy times, like twelve hours a day studying for the for the exams. What I always did is I combined the coffee with L-theanine, and L-theanine that's an amino acid. It's the same found in green tea, and what it does is it actually increases alpha waves in your brain, like a frequency, and it makes you extremely relaxed, like it completely calms you down and m many people they after coffee they get that edge like they get a little bit jittery that mm. that anxious high and you can completely calm that down with the l-theanine um, it increases GABA it makes you retain more information so the, the best way would be like an equal dose of l-theanine and coffee and so 100 milligram 100 milligram and um, also for important tasks even playing poker doing games that's something you could do like I, I used to um, religiously did that back then and uh, it's a game changer. I'm not a plug for that. Like that, that stuff is super deep. That amino acid. Yeah. Um, and it actually has a umami taste. It's very, very interesting flavor. But um, it's an interesting way to take the edge of the coffee, actually. Okay. Very interesting. So we talked about the basics. What would you say? Yes. Uh, yeah. Non-negotiables that you need to pay attention to in your if you not only want to live healthy as healthy as possible, perhaps cure your diseases, but also perform well. Yeah. Number one is hydration. Mm -hmm. Sounds boring and most but most people get it wrong. Like most people think hydration means, okay, drink a lot of water. But 
just drink a lot of water means you just pee out a lot of water and that's it. Like mm -hmm. hydration for me means that the water actually reaches your cells, goes inside your cells, inside your organs, inside your brain. Your brain is 70% water. Mm -hmm. And how do we get water inside our cells? You need to use the sodium glucose transporter and you need to use this osmosis. It's a basic biological principle. And what this means in reality is just use some sea salt. So what I do, the first thing in the morning, what I do is I drink a big cup of water, of my filtered water, and I add a pinch, like just the, the tip of my finger I put in my, in my sea salt and I put it in the water. Okay. And if you do that over time, you will notice your hydration will be a lot better. You will be peeing a lot less and you will need to drink a lot less water. I only, only drink 2 to 2.5 liters a day. I used to drink 5 liters. But back then I was most of the time dehydrated and these days... I feel perfectly hydrated mm. and hydration is so important also for thinking for for brain function for health in general our body is made of water so hydration i think is key principle number one for sure what about the quality of water i think there are a lot of myth and information out there videos tap water yes no filtered water plastic bottles yeah can you enlighten us it, it, it depends it depends i think you do 90% right if you drink enough water with enough minerals. That's already a solid foundation. How do you get the enough? What do you mean with enough minerals? With the minerals, I'm talking about the sea salt, like okay. just adding okay. sea salt inside your water. Mm -hmm. If you don't have really great spring water that has been flushing all over the Alps and collected minerals there, that spring yeah. water, that there you don't need to add the sea salt, right? So if you're just drinking the tap water, the bottled water, or you're using filtered water, I would always add the sea salt. Regarding the water quality, honestly, there's a lot of different dogmas. There's people selling you alkaline water machines for 5,000 bucks. There's people selling you reverse osmosis filters. Do I believe in all of that? Honestly, not. What I believe is that most of the tap water in most cities and most buildings is not the best thing for your body because it goes through pipes that have lead which is another heavy metal, which is how we started our discussion. Mm. Now we are not leaching it from our fillings, from our amalgam fillings, but now we are leaching it from the pipes. And you drink that water every day, so you're confronting your body every day with those amounts of lead. So if possible, get at least a cheap water filter. Most of the time they have some activated carbon filters, and that at least takes out 99% of all that trash that can bind already heavy metals, that can bind some medications that are in our tap water, like the pill, which is everywhere on the world in our tap water. So that's kind of the, the first thing I would do. Get a cheap under the sink water filter that stays good for a year. Cool yeah. side effect is your tap water will taste better. Like it will not taste metallic. I, I noticed this as well. That filtered water tastes this. I don't want to say it has a flavor, but somehow it feels like there's a bit of a yeah. flavor. It's super yeah. weird. Yeah, it, it's less of a um, flavor. It's more of a density thing because the mm -hmm. if, if you filter it, then you also filter out um, heavy metals and you filter out some minerals. And this way it tastes lighter. And then you can really taste the water. A good example is Evian water. That is very light. And most people, they say this almost tastes sweet. Like they can, they would, they would swear that Evian water tastes sweet. And yeah. it's just from a, from a spring and from a well that is completely full of those uh, minerals, but very low in the, in the heavy minerals. That's yeah. why it has a different taste or flavor. Mm. Yeah. You mentioned the pill and I don't know where I saw it and okay. came across this. I mean, this, this really is going to sound like a big conspiracy theory, right? So let me, I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to recap it the way I remember it. So basically when, especially for guys, this is important to, to, to know if it's true, but listen, like we're here, we're talking about everything. So what happens is if the woman takes the pill and then they go to toilet, they pee, right and then that estrogen full of water full of estrogen goes into the groundwater it's being recycled but or filtered but it cannot filter out the chemicals and the estrogen of the pill and then goes back into the tap water and we men we drink it and estrogen for us is not necessarily that good am i getting this right or is it completely the, the and the and we are already trying to fix this for 20 years we know about these issues publicly yeah. right like the pill it's pretty much the female hormones progesterone estrogen mm -hmm. goes you take it to your kidney and then the woman pees it out 
And we have filter machines that try to clean the tap water, but these molecules, they are so tiny that we just don't have the right filter. Like yeah. we have no way of filtering it out these days. And that way for sure, you all, we always get small amounts of the pill. Even your babies do, right? If you do the, your baby food with this, with the tap water, then mm. you will already give your baby these small amounts of female hormones. And those are amounts, they're not crazy and scary, but they accumulate over their time. And if you're drinking that water for 80 years, then for sure that has a has an effect. But that that is a whole interesting topic. It's, I would call it the mass estrogenization of our society. Mm. Like th this is only one of the pillars where we are getting too much estrogen in our bodies. It's the pill. But there's a few other crazy things we should talk about. Like, for example, li line seed and flex seed. I'm, I'm sure you heard of those. Of course, yeah. Superfoods, right? Mm. But why were they popularized? A herbalist discovered them and discovered that they have some good properties and very interesting properties. One of the properties is they have crazy amounts of phytoestrogens, of chemicals that work very similar to estrogens in our body. And now what happens these days, everybody thinks they're so healthy and everybody puts them on their archive bowls and everybody puts them in their smoothies. But what you're doing there is you're consuming huge amounts of estrogens every day. Mm -hmm. And as a man, that's not great because yeah. this can make you grow man boobs. This can disrupt your testosterone cycle. This can promote infertility. And as a woman, the same, it's also not good. This can increase problems like breast cancer. This can disturb your normal period cycle. So I, I don't understand why the superfood is so popular these days, but I, I feel it's way too overused for, for normal people. Like they should scale back on these things if they don't know what they're doing there. Yeah. I mean, I do understand that there's also certain interest and in industry behind it. They want to make money with certain products and foods. And here's also what I also really would like to address in this podcast in general is because I'm also someone I really try, try to try out things. And it's like, oh, yeah, but Ben, like, I'm not supposed to eat this and this. What, I, what can I really eat then? Well, hear me out. Yes, if you go in a supermarket, probably 90% of the foods are trash. Accept it, period. 90% of the foods there are not good. And now the next question, oh, do really people or those industries or whoever's behind that, don't they have their best interest? In no. There was a time when there were advertisements of doctors saying smoking is not bad for you or sugar is not bad for you. And we talk about 30, 45, 50 years ago, right? And we still have people supporting and saying that cereals are good for you with full of sugar and all the bullshit we have for breakfast. In fact, why is it called breakfast? Think about it. It's not that you necessarily need to have breakfast, but there's a certain interest because you can then create a need and with a certain need, you can sell products because there's a demand for it. It's also a lot of the stuff, if you understand a little bit how economics work, how the market works, you create a need and then you can supply it and you create bought products, even though you yeah. don't need it. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. And I mean, you don't even need to be a conspiracy theorist to believe that because it's a profit capitalism. market. It's, it's capitalism in a nutshell. Yeah. Like companies just want to sell you things and make money. Yeah, we can all agree on that. And if they can sell you more and you need it more, then they can make more money. But in this equation, your health or how you feel is not part of it. There, At no stage did anybody ever say that a company has to make you healthy and then make money. That's just yeah. not part of the equation. So that, that's that's on you. That's on you and me, right? It's a, it, it's a very good point you brought out. I mean, most grocery stores, they have a health food section. <laughs> what does this tell you about the other food? Like, if that's the if that's the actually healthy food, what what, what is the rest? Like, what, what, what's up there? It's you. You one shelf, and then also <laughs> half of it half of it is full with artificial sugar. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I really like. Well, I think I don't know. Last week you made a story about, or you made a reel about carnivore diet and what happens to your body if you eat meat, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a vegan or whether you're carnivore, I really like your follow-up stories because, of course, this always creates the vegans getting angry, the carnivores getting angry. Whatever. But what actually happens if you... I think you, you mentioned that it's more about being more mindful about your diet and actually cutting out a lot of very unhealthy food, pro processed foods, seed oils, a lot of the stuff that cause a lot of problems. Even though I'm, a very, I'm very skeptical, skeptical, skeptical about vegan diet in general, I've been... 
uh, trying the vegan diet out. I've been trying it out for myself for a long time and I can say it was not good for me. I think at the beginning I experienced um, a high. I felt very energized, but then after months it dropped off. It, it just dropped off and I, I was like, what's going on? I ate super clean. I didn't eat any sugars. Uh, I eat uh, mostly vegan products, but once I tr looked into what actually is part of these vegan products and all these chemicals and artificial shit in there, okay, then I realized this can't be healthy. Like the soy products and um, it was, it's just not good. It's just not good for human body. But I do understand that part that it's the first step. And if someone says for whatever reason, okay, I want to be, uh, I, you know, for moral reasons or ethical reasons, fine. I totally accept that, you know, and, and appreciate and respect that. But if we look into a carnivore diet and the nutrition of liver of a ribeye steak, you can't compete that. You can't argue that. Just speaking from objectively basis, neglecting the moral and ethical part of it, just saying, I, I, from what I know, I don't think there's any more nutrient-rich food than a liver, than a beef liver. Correct me if I'm wrong. Co completely agree. Like, I, I agree with, with all your points you made, right? And that's kind of the, the dirty secret of the whole industry and yeah. why there are so many influencers having success with so many different diets. What everybody does when they start these diets is they cut out the bullshit. And if you cut out yeah. the bullshit, you suddenly feel great. And if you're cutting out the bullshit on a weekend diet, you feel good in the beginning. If you're cutting out the bullshit on a carnivore diet, you feel good in the beginning. Yeah. And w once you start adding processed, processed meats for the vegan diet or processed daily meats for the carnivore diet, that's when you start to feel bad again. And the secret all along was not the type of diet, but cutting out the bad shit. Yeah. If you're eating 90% foods that do not have ingredient lists but are actually the foods yeah then you suddenly feel good it sounds boring and it's not sexy to sell but that's the that's the real secret behind it but then again i also agree with you that on a vegan diet i did also not feel great like i've tried every diet on this planet because i'm curious and i like experimenting yeah. and the vegan diet was just not for me in the beginning it was all rightish but after a while i just I feel tired. I have cravings. I was craving meat all the time. I was dreaming about meat while I was on the diet. Maybe I'm a little bit crazy about that, but for me, that is nothing. And I've heard so many stories of people on the vegan diet after two, after five years, they go back. But the same goes for the carnivore diet. Like people are on the carnivore diet for two, three, four years, and they realize maybe that's not it. There's popular examples. The, the carnivore MD, Paul Saladino MD, like many people yeah. know him. He, he used to be carnivore. He was used to be carnivore MD until he realized he, he didn't feel great. His blood work was all whack and he, he started introducing fruits, introducing honey, introducing herbs. That's where he is right now, like a, a more moderate, balanced approach. It's not as radical. It's not as cool to sell, but it's just what works. So it's kind of the interesting. I had this for myself. I tried out the carnivore and I was craving fruits like crazy. <laughs> I would wake yeah. up in the night and I would just crave an apple. Mm, and it's yeah. also not necessarily good for you to eat during the night or eat right before you go to bed. I, at least for myself, when I just eat two or three hours before I go to bed, I have the best sleep. But I would just like, I ate my steak. And so I need a bit of fruit as well. Uh, I need yeah. a bit of something, not like even sweet stuff, honey, fruit, a banana or an apple. That's where for myself, I figured out I roll the best. Yeah, completely, completely agree. And I mean, m most people would crave these foods and not crave these junk foods anymore if they would go on the withdrawal from the junk foods. Like, yeah. honestly, it's it's an addiction. Junk food and sugary foods, 100% yeah. in 10 years, they're going to make thousands of studies on it. Right now we have a few. This is a pure addiction. Mm -hmm. And if you quit sugar, you start to have withdrawal symptoms. You start to sweat. You start to feel irritable. You start to feel angry. You want that sugar like you... Your body is like, give me that because the, the dopamine hits, they're not there anymore. Sugar gives you great dopamine hits. It's, yeah. it's similar levels to Coke, right? And once you stop and once you withdraw from that for seven days or something, then you stop and you realize, what, what the fuck was I doing? Like, why was I craving all that stuff? It, these companies, they make food as palatable and as addictive as possible. So you come back and you buy more because that way they earn more money. There's scientists in big companies from Döhler to ADM, their whole business model is making the food as addictive and palatable as possible, yeah. right? So that's kind of the, the gist of it. I can recommend everybody try to cut out junk foods, but not for one day or two days, 
but for a whole week and then reevaluate your relationship with junk foods and you will come back and for some people this will open their eyes mm. for sure i always uh, encourage i do my i think two three times i do a longer fast throughout the year and i also share this journey on my instagram and i always after six seven days i just feel like uh, it's it's ins it's very difficult but also the most rewarding if you just fast for seven days or six days or five to seven days is usually the sweet spot for me um but that's the ultimate form of cleansing your body in my opinion from what i've uh, came across with yeah yeah for sure it's, it's a it's a great way especially cardio metabolically right like resetting your insulin resistance resetting all these issues fasting for yeah. sure is a great great method i completely agree with you there yeah so we talked about the basics. So we had water. Yes. What is <laughs> That's all we, all, all we managed to do until now. It's, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's a complex <laughs> topic. You can go in yes. so many different directions. It's insane. So well, we sure. had water. What's water. The, what would you say is number two? Number two for most people is fats, the right kind of fats. I think that's the that's a really okay, important issue that people just don't understand. Like most people are afraid of butter. They're afraid of steaks. They, they have no idea what's what they should make of all the fat signs like they're they're really confused there but once you understand that most of the most important hormones in your body like testosterone estrogen and all, all the sex hormones and also vitamin d what does their chemical structure look like mm -hmm. it's cholesterol all of them are cholesterol and they just have a few different modifications on it but your body needs this cholesterol to build those molecules your body needs cholesterol to build the membranes in your in, in your in your head, to build all these little structures, all the cells to keep them there, we need cholesterol. And once people get not enough cholesterol, they develop hypotestosteronemia, they develop brain issues. So your whole body gets out of whack. Mm -hmm. And we are afraid these days of cholesterol because we are afraid of heart attacks, of LDL, of HDL, but that's a complete misconception. Sugar is what drives the inflammatory process, which drives atherosclerosis and cardiovascular diseases. It's not the cholesterol in your food. 20% mm. of people, I have to admit that 20% of people, they're very sensitive to cholesterol. And if they eat 10 eggs a day, then after 10, 20 years, they could get issues down the line, but most people are not. So the, the first thing I would do is Try to eat more eggs. To make it very simple, everything I just said, eat more eggs. You will do your body a favor. You will yeah. notice a positive difference in your body for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I think even my parents told me. Don't eat more than two eggs a day or something like that. I this. remember. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's crazy. And, uh, you know, I, I have these conversations with my, with my dad and I really appreciate my dad is very open. So he's not one of the stubborn generations. No, that's how we're being told. And this is how it is. Mm -hmm. Um and we also bread you know bread is good for you in the evening like uh, bread with especially in germany bread butter and some salami you know the typical mm -hmm. dinner and you think it's healthy and then now with what have been discovered over the last couple of years you actually get to realize mm, a lot of this stuff is not so healthy for healthy for you um so yeah with x yeah um it, it, it's so simple but but there's so much like it's so ingrained in us right like this do not eat more than two eggs. It's it's really crazy. And the other thing of the fats is cut out seed oils. Like the, the there's more and more studies coming out. Seed oils. What do I mean with that? Vegetable oils. Like mm. they they marketed them as vegetable oils. Can you go through this. like what is it? A corn oil or corn, uh, canola oil? Like well, the, what, the what, about, what about what about what um, about olive oil? Yeah. So so there there's fruit oils. Mm -hmm. and there's seed oils okay and seed oils is everything made out of the seeds so that would be rapeseed oil cottonseed oil sunflower oil maize oil all these kind of oil and how are they made you use billion tons of these kernels and you express them and e extract them with ethanol with multiple different versions of making them in a factory and compressing them down, getting the oil out. You heat them up, you cool them down, you heat them up, you press them again. And in the end, you get this sludge that used to be waste product of the industry. And now it's sold to us as a vegetable oil. And that stuff is extremely inflammatory for us. Yeah. And most people are cooking with sunflower oil. The reason we get sunburns is because we are eating too much seed oils and we're getting too much inflammation in our bodies with that. It, it sounds ridiculous, but when you look into it, you, you realize it. What we should be eating instead, it, it's very simple. There are six oils that are great for us. You have fruit oils, 
And with fruit oils, I mean olive oil, which is probably the best oil we could be taking. And I'm talking But there are also a lot of uh, cheap ones and fake ones that you need to pay attention to, right? It, 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 it always gets more complicated. And s sadly, most, most olive oil is fake on the market. Yeah. You can easily test that out, put it in the fridge. If it gets cloudy, it's real. If it's not getting cloudy, then... That's a great I don't know tip. what you're having there. That's a great tip. <laughs> I, lo I love these practical tips, like put an egg in the water. If it yeah. stays on the top, it's bad. If it drowns, it's good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's sometimes it's easier than than we think. Um, yeah. Besides the olive oil. So when it oil, gets sorry, yes. when it gets cloudy, yes. it's good. When yeah. it doesn't get yeah. cloudy, it's fake. Yeah. One. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, and good. if you leave it there for like a day, then mm -hmm. some of them they get really hard, and that, that, that's because it's real olive oil. The, the other thing is our bodies we can smell it unless you have like long COVID and you can't smell anymore. But most people, they know how to smell and they realize, okay, this tastes, smells fruity, smells like olives and this just tastes bland. Mm -hmm. And if you're buying an olive oil for under five bucks in the supermarket, yeah, no I would chance. put my, my hand in the, in the fire. There's no, there's no olive in it. Maybe I'd have seen some olives, but it's not olive oil. <laughs> so that's kind of the, the the issue there with the olive oil, which is a is a scandal. The same goes for honey, by the way, right? Like yeah. uh, honey and olive oil, those two are completely fake. And the university I used to study at, my master's in nutrition. Where 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 did you study, by the way? Uh, my my master's that was in uh, Bayreuth. It's uh, in Bavaria, mm -hmm. uh, very close to to Czechia, mm -hmm. and. They had the biggest laboratory in the world for um, authenticity analysis of honey. And they figured out that 70% of the honey on the market is fake. 70%. So more than is what is real is actually fake honey. Mm. And it's mo most of the time it's glucose syrup stretched with all kind of colorants and flavorings. And yeah, yeah that, that, that's kind of the, the thing. Again, there is a funny test. You can put that honey in a glass of water. And if the honey immediately dissolves, it's fake because it's just glucose syrup. If the honey kind of makes slurs and kind of stays there, then you likely have good honey. So you can also mm -hmm. test out your, your honey. It's another, another tip. So th those are fake. Olive oil is great and avocado oil is great. Mm. And then you have the coconut oil, which is, again, great for everything. You can use it on your skin, but you can also use it for cooking, for everything else. And then you have the animal-based oils, which is butter, which is lard, which is tallow. And they are also great for, for everything G? from... G as well. G is just butter where you put out the milk protein. But, oh, but I okay. agree. G, G you should should also add to that list. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. That's mm. the fats and the oils you need for everything. Like as lubrication, you can use them. You can use them as, as skincare and you can use them for cooking and eating. And those seed oils, whenever I'm at my mom's home, she still buys them, right? But I go in the kitchen, I just throw it away. <laughs> Honestly, I, 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 that's the first thing I do. It makes me mad that, that she mm. still has sunflower oil there. I take it, throw it away, and I buy a good bottle of olive oil. And at least while I'm there, I'm trying to do a good deed. So yeah. take care of your parents, guys. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's I always, of... uh, I send my parents uh, <laughs> always a big box of meat when I'm coming home. And uh, I always order good. more <laughs> so they, are, they have enough for the next couple of months. Um, uh, that's good. So, or, because uh, from the city where I come from, uh, it's, you, you know, there's, um, I, I don't think beef is necessarily or has been that popular. I think the first time I ate a beef steak was like super late. I, I might have been 19 or 20. You know, it's, it's, it was super common. You eat just pork, 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 mm. sausages and salami and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think Germany is ne necessarily a nation of beef. You know, it's, it's growing. You have great suppliers now, but you also need to wiggle your way through it and then find a good supplier or a local supplier. This is how I would like to have it. Uh, that, uh, you know, you go to your local butcher and you buy it fresh from the market and you know where it's coming from. That's that's how I envision it also for me and my family in, in the future. So that, That's what I'm doing, honestly. Yeah. Like even in Berlin, even in a big city where I'm living right now, mm -hmm. you can find farmers. It doesn't matter if you're in a huge city, in a small city, you can find some local farmers. Yeah, for sure. And if you've ever tasted beef from them or if you've ever tasted the milk that they have compared to the supermarket, yeah. Your mind is blown completely. Yeah. It, it doesn't look the same and it doesn't taste the same. It's a completely different ball game. It's crazy. Yeah. So we had water, we had fats, cholesterol, fats. What's no what, what about more like areas? I guess sleep or working out mm -hmm. or um, I mean, if you still have other bad these nutritions we need to talk about. This is what you need to take care of and you'll be fine. Cutting out seed oils was a big one. Um, 
what else? For sure. I mean, the basics always stay true. Like the, the basics, and they're important but boring for everybody. At your sleep, eight hours of sleep. There is only very few people that do not do well on eight yeah. hours of sleep. Eight hours of sleep is the optimum, and you need to optimize it, right? Yeah. Cut out your smartphones from your bedroom. We just we just prohibited them with my family. Like if you're in the bedroom, you're not allowed to have a smartphone there. Mm. It's just illegal for us now. You pay a fine. So that's kind of like you need to find a way to get that out of your out of your your sleep yeah. schedule. Sleep better. Try to eat kind of healthy. At least cut out processed food. We had those. We had more specific topics with the seed oils and stuff, but. You, your body already kind of knows what's good and what's bad. Like processed pizza, processed junk food, cut it out. And moving is important. You don't even need to do exercise, but just walking already. Yeah. I have my best ideas for my best reels and best content always when I'm walking. Like I, I go out, I have a little baby in the evening. I just go around the park, go around the block, and I'm just thinking. And for me, it's like a little life hack. Whenever I go out, I have the best thoughts I can think. And when I come back home, I'm I'm, I'm kind of grounded again, so that's kind of the, the the last boring but big basic huge change you can do. Just try to get more steps in. You can even listen to this podcast while walking. Like that, that's what I always do for my my books. I don't have the time to sit down. I try to combine it, be more efficient, and l- listen to something while I'm walking. Yeah. This way, I get both in my my ten thousand steps, but also be really productive. Get some information. Upgrade. It's 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 always boring, the most mm-hmm. effective things. It's never one more book, one more course, one more supplement. Yes, they're all good, and maybe a supplement will increase your performance or whatever by 2%, and yes, vitamin D supplements are important, and yes, certain magnesia prepar- or uh, supplements before you go to bed, but at the end of the day, it's the basics. And I yeah. always like to look at things from the extremes, if you isolate yourself for a week, and I, I, I think I did it now three times, where I just deleted all social media, I went to Iceland in a cabin or somewhere in the in a, in a, in a cabin in, in Austria, or somewhere in the woods, just being in nature for a week, I've never been the most calm, uh, felt the happiest and uh, focused than there. We're just going this absolute extreme of just like eating healthy foods, no social media. My daily task was uh, collecting firewood, was getting water from a local farm. So there, like I had, um, didn't have any electricity, it was just a cabin. So I need to go get water. And you just have to do these simple tasks. And then the rest of the day you spend on reading, you go for walks and hikes and like just really boring, boring stuff. And for the first two or three days, it feels hard, but then it's just a blessing. And you don't need to do these extremes, but if you do it once, and the same with fasting, just go to the extreme end of the spectrum to see the benefits. And also go to the other extreme, eat fast food all the time, sleep shitty, and then compare how you feel. So just don't do it. it. Should, it should, yeah, <laughs> don't do it, of course. But it should show you in which, just in which direction you should go and that you should mm-hmm. try to avoid most of the other direction, right? Yeah. That's... That's how I like to see it. I, I, I like that, that viewpoint. And I can deeply relate to you. I, I really feel you regarding the um, being in the woods. I think every man would um, benefit from doing that at least once in a while. I, I also do it every year. Yeah. What, last year, I was in Sweden for two weeks living in the woods. There's mm-hmm. a great national park called Toresta. You can just freely camp there and make fire. And we actually uh, catch the duck and ate it. It's, it's quite fun with friends. And this year, again, I'm going one week away in the in the France Alps, uh, in the Pyrenees. And uh, we're just wild camping there, right? Like, mm-hmm. we don't allow phones there. We don't allow anything there. You're just, I'm always there with my ma- some male friends. So, and that's, that's it, right? Yeah. And it, it helps you reconnect to nature. Maybe reconnecting to nature would be the last point on the boring but basic list. Most people they spend no time in nature. They have they don't even remember when was the last time that they touched nature with their hands or their feet. And there's this it's even scientific these days called grounding, mm-hmm. where you sit on somewhere where there's earth or nature. Like it's not the asphalt, not the not the streets, but you go somewhere where there's nature and you take off your shoes and you take off your socks because they have most of the time they have gummy and you cannot absorb the vibration, the electricity of the earth, and you just stand there. And then you tell me how you feel. Like most people, they, they don't even remember the last time they did that. Mm. Try it out. It's a it's a life hack I also 
enjoy. It feels reconnecting, honestly, to be back in nature a little bit. Even if you're in the city, you can do that. I mean, the problem these days is that with all these, most of the tips and hacks, you literally can't make any money. You, you, <laughs> you can't. True. You can't make money with fasting. You can't make money True. with meditating. You can't True. make money with grounding. And you can't make money with cutting out sugar. You can't make money with cutting out seed oils. You can't make money with sleeping well. Of course, there's certain tools, whatever, right? But at the end of the day, it's very difficult. So nobody has really an interest to recommend you those things. Agreed. Agreed. F fun fact, you know what you also cannot make any money with? Yeah. With, no. with herbs and with herbal mm -hmm. remedies. And d did you ever ask yourself why all the pharmaceuticals are based on herbs? If you look at, for example, the classics like aspirin, it's just the willow bark, which both have salicylic acid. But the pharmaceutical companies, they cannot patent willow bark because it's a plant and it's illegal to patent. So they make the synthetic version of it and then they can patent it and then they can sell it to you and then they can make their trillion dollars. And then they go out of their way to tell you that the willow bark root is not safe, the dosage is not safe, you should take the synthetic version. But for most basic medications, there's always a natural alternative available. But there's just no money, no interest behind it. No company can yeah. patent it, so nobody can recommend or sell it. That's why there's, why would we learn about it? Like there's no incentive behind it. Somebody has to go out of their way to teach you these things. Otherwise, you will never you will never learn that. What is something, if we talk a little bit about more, of course, also enhancing their performance, and especially for our community, it's playing long sessions, being in front of the computer for seven, eight, nine hours to not lose focus. Um, what are things um, that, that you would recommend the people that they can enhance their performance with but also something that's not necessarily so time consuming. Let me give you an example, cold shower. We have to shower anyway, it's great for you. You're not spending any single uh, minute. Maybe it could be supplements, foods, well, whatever it is. What is something that uh, if someone comes with this request to you, what would your, your advice be? So one thing I noticed is that many people that have longer time consuming things that they want to focus on and they do not want to get distracted. Yeah what they could do is do fasting for the whole time. And that's okay. what I, I, I used to. In, in the first hand, it sounds counterintuitive, mm -hmm. but what happens if you're fasting is you're not spiking your blood glucose up and down and you're not spiking your insulin up and down. So you, you never have to eat anything. You can completely stop thinking about that and you will never get tired once it crashes down because you're not consuming mm -hmm. anything. If you get in that rhythm and you try that a few times, I used to, during med school also, when from 8 to 16, I used to not eat. I used to just fast. And I could completely power focus during the time. So if you want to unlock that and tr try that, that's for sure one thing. Instead of constantly eating snacks, constantly trying to figure out nutrition, you can also just go the different way and leave it out. Try without it. That, that's one thing that you could try. Then one thing you could recommend is for sure magnesium. You, you mentioned it earlier when we talked about supplements, but we have a pandemic of magnesium deficiency, which is rooted in the fact that our soils where our food is grown are completely empty of magnesium. It's completely leached off all the fertilizers. We got everything out the last 50 years. Now there's nothing left, which is why 99% of people have a magnesium deficiency, which is why 99% of people that use a magnesium supplement, even a cheaper one, just don't get oxide. Oxide is shit. Everything else is good. Mm -hmm. They benefit from that. They can suddenly sleep better. They reduce their heart palpitations and they can think better. So that's kind of a very cheap and easy supplement that actually works for most people. It's again, not a sexy supplement, but one that really um, works. Then yeah. One thing I already recommended, if you're consuming caffeine and you do not want to get that edge, then you can try the L-theanine hack. That is incredible for me. Like there's nothing that gives you those, that kind of focus. The, How it, is it, it has called? Do, can, you, can you spell it? Um, L minus T-H-E-A-N-I-N-E. -E. It's a non-essential amino acid. L-theanine. L-theanine, yes. Is it a magnesium? Um, no, it's not. It's a, its own amino acid. Like it's—it's okay. uh, it's only found in green tea, actually, in smaller concentrations. Because I think I, I take it in the evening. You take some of the sleep supplements also. They have yeah. it because it reduces stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. But it, it is a really great combination together with caffeine. Like okay. taking it together with caffeine—that's that. I think the nootropic 
and I don't like that word, but it's a nootropic that has the most effect out of all the nootropics there are. Is it also known as L-theonate or is it something different? L-theonate, that, that's, that's again something different. And yeah. some of the magnesiums are also magnesium threonate, so maybe that's where the, ah, the confusion yeah, yeah. comes from. Yeah, yeah, because I take it in the evening. No, L-theonine pulver. I, no, I take, in the evening, I take L-theonine, I take... Ethionate. Mm -hmm. Trionate, probably. Yeah. That's the that's the famous uh, Huberman stack, basically. I don't know if you've uh, heard about it. I, I or, know Huberman. Yeah. I, I know that he recommends, but Ethionine, it's been around for mm -hmm. 15 years. Like the combination just caffeine and Ethionine, it's mm. it's crazy. P people, okay. I, I can highly, highly vouch for that. And the thing is, I dabbled with all these other nootropics, right? Like I tried so many things from Uprazine A to Fenibut to all these rat Ratzetams and stuff. And it has just not enough behind it. It's optimizing maybe 0.05% of your performance, and, and, and but it, it doesn't do a really impactful change. Yeah. And you're messing around with your brain chemistry a little bit in a way that you don't fully understand. And if you don't fully understand it, I would not recommend mm. just doing it. So I'm, I'm a little bit more skeptical on on these kind of things mm -hmm. and the same goes for many of the crazier biohacks like i know people that are recommending uh, you get red light therapy can be interesting getting in these plastic sauna bags can be interesting ice bathing can be interesting but i feel if your mission is and your focus in life is to be good at that one thing then focus on that don't focus on all these biohacking yeah. other ways around it and and, and if you find them interesting, for sure do them, but they are not a must to be a master at your craft. Yeah. I, I would rather focus on the basic and and apply maybe alphenine. Another thing I really love is sauna. I think that's the one of the things that I benefited from the most over the last 10 years. I'm going to the sauna three or five times a week. So do you have quite one at often. home or you go somewhere? I would love to. That's the first thing I'm going to get when I, when I have my house. But uh, right now I just have a gym very close to me where i can go into the mm -hmm. sauna and the sauna for optimizing your health i think there's nothing that has so many good studies related i'm oh, sorry my baby and it has so many um, positive effects on cardiometabolic diseases preventing alzheimer's preventing dementia reducing the risk for heart attacks which will likely kill either you or me in the next 20 years like we are all all half of men are dying of heart attacks right not, not, not fear mongering it's just the the sad statistics so um it, it's good to at least know, know that. Um, so it's good for that. But for me, that replaced the need for any kind of drug. So I don't need alcohol to calm down anymore. I don't need weed to calm down anymore or benzos or any other drug. If, if I feel that edge that I cannot take out of my head, then I, I have this inner demon, just being honest. I have this inner demon where sometimes uh, it's just not right. And... I used to also cope with weed and alcohol, but then the next day I felt even more shit and my brain was even less optimal. These days I just, I, I tell my wife, I need to go to the sauna now. And I go to the sauna 60 minutes and I'm cured. Like I, I just, mm. I come out and I have this deep and inner serene tranquility. I know not everybody has access to a sauna. It's not, not that easy, but I can really, really vouch for people. It's also not the sexiest thing. Most of the time, there are some old dudes uh, inside the sauna, and not not many of the younger people. So uh, don't don't expect many many young pretty ladies there. It's mostly old dudes, at least. But right. why? <laughs> because why? they know that uh, it, it's so good. Like that, they. I think it's two two points. One is shame. Like being naked, we kind of. No, why? Why do you find? Why do you find older older people more on average more older people in the sauna than younger people? I think it's it's the one thing is the shame like the okay. younger the younger generation it's too ashamed to be naked in a completely mm -hmm. public setting like I we mean, have... you can technically you could wear your towel i would sometimes see people they just take two towels one to cover their genitals and then the second one to sit on it a a agreed, agreed. There, there's old. there's ways around it if, yeah. if you want to yeah, yeah. agree sure but the, the more important thing is they realize the benefits for the health mm -hmm. when i talk to them and they are the most interesting conversations I have besides this one. I really like talking to you, but there, there's <laughs> like lawyers that are 70 years old that have been mm. going to the sauna 30 years, ex-policemen. I met government officials in the sauna, which is also crazy connecting them on in a, yeah. sitting naked next to them. And like 
they all, most of the time they have a negative health event that scared them. They had a heart attack, they had a stroke, they had something that happened, or they had their best friend die of a heart attack. And their doctor tells them, this is what you should do. Mm. Uh, sauna actually has the most science to reduce that risk of getting mm. it. And that's why these old people, they're just collecting there and getting older and older. And uh, I, I think sauna is, is fantastic. It, the, there's two cool science facts, just out of curiosity. One is called heat shock proteins. And what a sauna does is it releases heat shock proteins. And these heat shock proteins, it pretty much kills off bad cells. It kills off cancer cells. It kills off viruses. It kills off all these bad things. And the other thing is it reduces your cortisol. Mm -hmm. And we started this discussion when we were talking about caffeine and the cortisol crisis. And what sauna does is it takes it off. It oh, takes okay. off that edge. It takes off your stress. When you're at the end of the day and you're still so anxious, jittery, it completely yeah. takes it off. And that's why I'm not a friend of ice bathing. Because what happens when you go in an ice bath, it's a life or death situation, right? Like you, your body gets really extremely stressed, extreme amounts of cortisol are released. And that's when you go off, you release massive amounts of endorphins. And that's why you feel great after the ice bath. But we are already too stressed. We don't need massive stresses. We, it's like doing bungee jumping every day. Yeah. Like you would not do that because you know it. This is extreme amounts of adrenaline. And that's what I also like, kind of uh, dislike about the, the, the Huberman pod podcast because this popularized ice bathing to an extreme. I know now way too many people that are doing ice bathing regularly, people that have thyroid issues that are getting worse than thyroid issues because the overproduction of adrenaline and stress completely mm. wrecks their, their hormones. Now we kind of drifted apart a little bit, but mm. yeah, it's a... I, I, I mean, I, I, for me... Cold exposure, ice exposure. I did it because my, my family was a thing. My parents would go ice bathing, so I kind of naturally grew into it. And it's a lot of the things that I tried out because I read about it and I tried it out with ice baths and uh, cold showers. I probably, from a theoretical standpoint, know the least about it because I just tried it and I felt good. So I cannot really say anything about it. I can just, for myself, even after taking ice, ice baths, I feel super calm. I, When I take an yeah. ice bath, yes, the first 10 seconds, I'm like, <laughs> but then I tried, I calm down and my body temperature, I can feel adjust. And after 30 seconds a minute, I feel completely calm. And I just sit there for two or three minutes. I go out, I'm like, I'm super relaxed. So I definitely don't. And when I drink coffee, yes, I can feel it. I'm more, you know, bam, bam, boom. But with ice baths, maybe I'm just, I don't know, I'm just making it up and I, it's, it's, but at least for myself, I feel super calm. I feel super relaxed when I take a cold shower, sometimes even in the evening when I'm feeling like this kind of, maybe I have a bit of a headache and it was an exhausting day. I go take a cold shower and I feel a lot better. I go to bed and I can sleep pretty well. Cold shower, I think, is different. Like, cold shower is less of a massive stressor of cortisol. Okay. You mean, like, and really the, the ice bath? like The, the okay. ice bath and the, the thing, course, maybe yeah. I, I expressed it wrong, but it's not a constant cortisol exposure you get there, but only, like, one massive spike. Like, you go inside, and those first 20 seconds where you're shivering, that's when the cortisol is sp spiking. Afterwards, the cortisol goes down quite quickly, but your body compensates with the endorphins, compensates with the natural painkillers, that which also make you feel so great and calm afterwards. Yeah. Of course, th th there is no chronic ex uh, exposure to the cortisol with the ice bath. So that, that issue is way less with it. And if people enjoy the ice baths and they enjoy the cold showers, then I would never recommend them to stop it unless they have thyroid issues. Yeah. Then you should look into it. Or if you have a history of heart attacks, then you should also be careful because you, you it, it can shock you. But also start slow. That's also what I heard. You shouldn't do an ice bath first, start with cold shower, start on the legs, slowly get it. You don't need to start with the coldest. Yeah, that's also a good good advice. I, I feel with social media, it's a little bit dangerous what, what is being portrayed. Like every, it's, yeah. it's too extreme. The, the crazy extremes are always, they're but then fun you can, and cool. Once you're trained, you can try out the extremes. You know, for sure, for but sure. You, you yeah. need to get there. You also don't go to a gym and say, "I want to do a black belt uh, exam." No, you <laughs> yeah. learn the basics, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely agreed. Yeah. If Absolutely. you want to try out fasting, try for one day, and then next time you try two or three days. You don't need to yeah. go for ten days at your first attempt. Um, yeah. And this is also very discouraging because you try it for, "Oh, I'm gonna do seven days," and then, "Oh, you do it only one day," and then it feels super discouraging. But when you set your goal, okay, let's try out one day and you manage one day or even halfway through, it's like, I achieved 50% of my goals. I'm always a big proponent of setting big goals that are hard to achieve mm -hmm. 
but with certain things you also need to like be realistic like very challenging goals and i think already fasting not eating for a day is probably something that 98 percent of the population don't even try to achieve so it is already quite an uh, quite a big goal in, in that sense right so yeah yeah i i also don't like a lot of stuff that is being pushed on social media for obvious reasons but it's like people need to be louder and louder and louder and more extreme and more polarizing and if there's someone yeah you should pay a little more attention and you know try to find the middle way try nobody's going to listen to that like people like to listen to those extremes and polarizing yeah. stuff right and yeah. it triggers emotion so yeah. even though i hope that one day there will be or soon there will be an influencer because i feel there's a niche as you said nobody makes it attractive but this moderation principle and slowing down if you take that to the extreme then that could also again be interesting right like the yeah. person that completely advocates always the middle always that middle approach I think that could also be a personality that's missing on social media. Maybe of it's, a, find your it's niche. a little... Find your niche, always. <laughs> find yeah. your niche. 100%. <laughs> Completely, yeah. yeah. Just niche out. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, being authentic is what's going to win you the battle. And then here and there, you need to pay attention to social media trends. I mean, um, that's normal. That's just how the... You never change a system from the outside. You always change a system from the inside. So if you try to do it your way and thinking... You're gonna you're gonna beat the system. I see it for you. You try to hear the world, right? That's your agenda. But you also post your stuff on Instagram. Is Instagram good for <laughs> humanity? Well, we doubtful. <laughs> no, the thing is, most people try to be right, but mm -hmm. you're not gonna change by being right. If you wanna move, if you wanna act just always according to your morals, you're not gonna change anything. You could say, I'm writing a book. I'm holding seminars. I avoid social media. Well, you're not, you wouldn't really change the world. So you have to sacrifice certain things in order to make the change. So you have That's to it. change it within. So you have to utilize the system and you utilize Instagram, right? Completely. So, I, I completely agree with you. But honestly, I would like to share this, this piece of personal experience. Before I used to be course. active now on social media, I used my smartphone for maybe 10 to 20 minutes a day. I was always, I never had a private Instagram. I never had a private TikTok. I never had TikTok at all. I never had any of these these short form contents. And since my, my success on Instagram, I've been using my smartphone understandably a lot more often. Some days I have like eight hours, 12 hours on the smartphone. And I have to admit that my focus span, my brain fog, my own function, massively declined like mm -hmm. I, I used to be easily able to just meditate for 30 minutes or just talk to somebody watch a movie completely uninterrupted i had no brain fog ever at all with these eight hour 12 hour social media days my mental health definitely declined so yeah. I, I, I'm biting into the, the bit of sour bullet like it's the best way for me to accomplish my mission and to, to go forward but I also acknowledge the fact that less social media exposure is is the way to go and that's something also in my private communities and classes i always also teach people yeah. like being there for these long long hours this yeah. this is this will be the end of humanity this will be a, an issue long term so yeah wait for the day one day i will disappear i i 100 <laughs> agree and i think that's why when you are to expose to social media that much at least you need those two or three resets a year where you go somewhere retreats connect with nature disconnect Agreed. from social media but i don't want to defend your your points or I let's say i don't want to i don't want to disagree on that but at least you're producing something the worst form is just being a consumer on social media <laughs> yes, yes like if you spend eight hours or four hours a day consuming social it's the absolute oh, yeah, worst yeah, 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 yeah. if yeah. you use it for something to build your brand to make money all right, it's I. We can still talk about it, but I can at least see the reasons for. It. So, and then from time to time, use that freedom you have acquired through social media and the opportunities the internet provides to take care of your health, to disconnect for one or two weeks. Because in a traditional nine to five, it's a lot harder to just say, "Hey, you know, I'm gone for a week." Now, with the freedom you and I have, we can say, "Hey, we're gone for a week. We go on a retreat, or we disconnect and we reset." But if you're in this nine to five where it's really hard, plus you're consuming social media, man, we don't have any long-term studies, but you don't need to be an Einstein to realize that this is fucking dangerous 
for your brain cells, for your overall well-being. And man, I'm already looking for, I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm already projecting in 30 years when we've studied all the how, how negative and how bad it is. I feel like it's almost similar to not know, now knowing how bad smoking is for you, mm -hmm. right? It took, yeah. even though back in the days, there were probably also some outliers that said, listen, smoking is not good for you. And then it took 30 years until we put warning labels onto the packages. And that's probably the same. Like, we're humans. You just look into history and learn yeah. from it. You don't need to wait for those long-term studies to come out that tell you that social media is bad for you to make a change. Yes, yes. And the sad part is likely there won't be any studies because there's no incentive behind it. L let's wait yeah. for it, but that's True. kind of the... The, Might the, also the be issue the case, behind, yeah. behind all of it. But I like your point of view. Just watch yourself. Just know what you're doing and acknowledge it. Try to be a little bit more conscious. And if you realize something is bad for you, then don't wait for somebody telling you it's bad for you. Just yeah. you can do your own decisions. You're your own man or your own woman in mm -hmm. your life, right? Completely agreed. And and I really like that point and would like to emphasize is create instead of consuming. There's nothing that makes you more happier than creating instead of consuming. Create anything. You can create art. You can create music. You can create podcasts. You can create on Instagram. You can, you can create anywhere. As a man, I feel it's even more important to create. Like this is what deeply satisfies men, and this is what deeply contributes to the crisis men have to the identity crisis. They are not creating anymore. Like you need to produce something. You need to produce something that aligns with your own values. Yeah. This is the secret to happiness. Yeah. I, and people are always saying, okay, well, what am I supposed to produce? Well, it's not so much about producing a product or a service, just documenting your, you can literally start today. All right, today at the end of the day, I take my phone for a minute and I create a story about sharing my journey of spending less time on social media. That's a start. And there's gonna be at least one in your followers that will already have a similar approach thinking I would like to spend less time on social media but I'm afraid or I'm addicted and I want to distract myself oh wow he talks about this I find this interesting let's follow him and you want to gonna have at least one person that you inspire and that you follow like for sure minimum there's more likely five or ten that you can inspire with you taking action but here's the point most people are afraid of the other 40 or 50 people in their circle of friends what is this guy doing? Oh, this is cringe because you care too much what other people think. And that's why you're not taking action. So that's also the best way of, 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 of seeing who are your true friends. You know, maybe some old forgotten friend from 10 years ago will message you, man, like, remember we went to school and uh, we were friends and uh, we hang out for quite some time. Like I saw your story, super inspiring. Document whatever you try to achieve. You have people that have grown massive audience just through reacting content, eating shit or whatnot, literally providing zero value. It's not so difficult yeah. in these days anymore, but just stay authentic, yeah. document your journey. Yeah, completely agree. I can I can deeply relate to you so often that you just mentioned with the true friends, like when I started my social media, you cannot believe how many haters you get, of course, with that oh, growth. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous how many people wish my death and verse every yeah. single day. It's, it's shocking. Mm -hmm. I would have never thought. But on the other hand, there's just as many good reactions. And there's yeah. e even old friends. I met somebody from school that I haven't talked to in 12 years now. Yeah. And he, he just randomly, he, I got suggested to him on, on his feet. And we, we now talk to each other and we just reconnect because he has also similar insights. He has a similar story. So th there's for sure people out there that uh, you, will, you will find and you will inspire again. So yeah. no, I really I, like your, like your yeah. points. Yeah, I, I had it at the beginning as well. Imagine when you say you want to make money with playing poker and then you open a poker school you know it just and then i started being active on twitter and i was just talking about how cold showers people people are making fun of me that i advocate for cold showers you know when i post something and then you see in the comments i'll oh, go take your cold showers or <laughs> i made a tweet i made a tweet that was super controversial because i told people you don't need to go to, to nightclubs when you're 20s there's so many other ways to spend mm -hmm. having fun and now people making fun. Oh, this is this dude that tells people not to go to nightclub. No, I just said I, I stopped doing it and it helped me to become successful. And mm. they're just finding whatever it is to make fun of you because yeah. unfortunately their lives are sad and it is what it is. And I actually also feel sorry for them. Um, so this, 
no matter the thing is you will always have haters no matter where you are if you are just a regular dude lives your life you have haters if you have a small business or a small brand on social media 100 followers you will have haters if you have a thousand followers you have haters like you half a million a million on instagram you have also haters it's it, it's like breathing air like why why yeah. why would you why would it bother you it's just what it is yeah. and the more haters you have probably you also do something right that's the thing like if you have a authentic personality and you stand your points and you stand to like you, you probably still stand to your cold showers which i which i find fascinating i'm not the biggest fan of cold showers you, yeah. you like cold showers that's fine yeah for me that's no reason to hate you and say oh ben i don't like you you don't like cold showers i'm gonna go on instagram now yeah like i i like when people have differing viewpoints because you can learn from them you can argue with them mm. but some people take it as a reason to just completely hate you yeah. but then also on the other hand it makes you an authentic personality that stands to whatever they believe in that stands behind what they like. And that's why it's polarizing, right? Yeah. So with a nightclub, I think it's a good advice for most people. Like nightclubs are shit. You, you don't want to date the women that are in there and you won't have fun getting uh, drunk with some sweaty dudes in a, in a shitty little club. So let's be honest. Why are going most dudes <laughs> to a nightclub? <laughs> why? So you want a reason. <laughs> like literally because you're, you're, you're too afraid to meet women in a regular setting, not being drunk. Because you're scared piece of shit. And I've been there as well. Sorry, like I, even I was with 21, a scared piece of shit to go if I see a woman to just say hi. So I needed a socially accepted uh, environment to hit on women. And that applies to 98 of dudes. Yeah, you want to dance. Yeah, you want to hang out for dudes. Yeah, come on. Let's not be full of shit. Let's just be honest. And I think going through the experience, you know, and realizing and if you're 17, 18, it's like, no, Ben, I like, like, okay, keep doing. But I think the older you grow, if you start approaching your 30s, if you're 28 and you're still hanging around the nightclubs every weekend, again, every weekend, you know, of course, I made it to said, stop going to nightclubs or I stopped going to nightclubs. If you from time to time go to a nightclub and have a good time, all right. But for most dudes, it's just a waste of time, waste of money, waste of energy. The next day is gone, very like you still fish it uh, the next two days. So uh, for like three, four hours of fun, sacrificing three days, I don't know. I, I, I would go even one step further. You said in the beginning, you also talk about mindset. Yeah. But I feel if you're yeah. still in that mindset that you allow yourself nightclubs then and when, I, I think you like if you really want to improve and if you really want to fulfill your life's mission, your life's calling, whatever that is, if that's being an entrepreneur, if that's having a successful career, whatever that is, then you should try to like don't, don't allow yourself all that shit. The same goes with the food. You should not allow yourself celebrating with a donut, celebrating getting shit faced every weekend. Yeah. You should realize this sets you back and you should realize that your time is fucking limited like we do not have much time on earth honestly yeah. like the older i get the more i see it i have friends already that are dead like life is so short we're, we're it, it goes by quicker than you think and those hours they add up those hours as you said the days afterwards they're all gone your mind is gone every time you drink you get stupider mm -hmm. it's just a fact <laughs> like it's yeah. just how it is i'm not saying nobody should drink ever again but if you really want to do something if you really have a drive and you're doing something then focus on that and give it your your best give it your all yeah there's there should be no excuses you shouldn't allow yourself too much of the other stuff yeah i think it should always come from a place of abundance if you say hey i achieved something i worked hard and now I reward myself with a good glass of whiskey with some friends or we go out f for good food and have a couple of drinks I, there's this difference between something that happens from abundance and something that happens from scarcity. Very often people go to nightclubs and drink because they want to distract themselves from the problems they have in their lives. And that actually creates a lot more stress because you push it away, you push it away, it gets, but it gets stronger. It accumulates more energy and it creates more mm. stress in your body because not making decisions or not moving on forward, not tackling the problems actually causes a lot of the stress. So yeah. what you're doing is you just you just pass it down and same with watching spending an endless amount of hours on social media or watching porn if you make the conscious decision man like i've been working really hard i achieve great things and now i want to spend some time with friends and also allow myself to have a drink or two or even eat a pizza that's fine right but it comes from you you decide you are in control i make the con conscious decision to 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 celebrate something 
and I think that's completely reasonable. Um, you should not get addicted to it, of course. Um, I don't necessarily think you need it. I think you can also just have a good time with your friends, go travel, go hike, go snowboard. There are endless things you can do for fun that does not include toxifying your body or eating bullshit. But I do see that there's always room we can discuss. But if on a, on a weekend basis you, you go and you drink and you smoke weed and all this kind of stuff, man, like, no, come on. Uh, I agree with you. So when we let's let's maybe wrap up the, the basics. Um, I, and I think the basics are the most important. That's what probably is going to give you 80, 90 percent of the results. Enough water, cut out the fast food, cut out the seed oils or cut, cut out processed foods, cut out artificial sugar. <laughs> That's already quite a lot. Um, but majority of your diet. What is your take on cheat days? I don't have them, honestly. Mm -hmm. But when people ask me, can I have them? The easy answer is the closer you are to your goal, the more often you can have these kind of cheat days. Mm -hmm. But if you're yeah. really, really far away from your goal, because your whole life was a cheat party until then, yeah. then I would recommend you to have them less often because most of the time the disadvantages overweigh. You get that taste again of the sweetness. You get the taste again of alcohol. You get the taste again of a bad life. And the likelihood of falling bad into these bad habits is, is mm. higher. Yeah. For the diet approach that I recommend to people, you don't really need a cheat day because you can eat fruits unlimited. Mm. And in the beginning, for most people, that is already enough to stay there for a few weeks, even months. Like if you have fruits in abundance from bananas to apples to all kinds of fruits, then you, you will not crave any other kind of cheat meals right mm -hmm. so that's kind of my my take on the cheat days okay but then again i'm not somebody that does these extremely restrictive diets i don't even believe in calories to be fair like i think calories is a, is a big bunch of bullshit that these science-based influencers are telling you but there's not that much science about calories because they tell you you can eat crispy creams and lose weight and yes if you starve yourself and eat some crispy creams you can lose some weight but long term your whole metabolic system your whole body system get out of whack your hormones get out of whack your appetite hormones get out of whack it's all controlled very very tightly so if you're having a very restricted diet then you likely will have cheat days because your body will not just not be able to hold back but if you're having a, a good diet if you're eating for example animal based you eat some meat you eat some fruits then your body very likely will not crave these cheat days okay that's kind of my my gist of it that's my answer take, ten, yeah. 10 years ago was more like, yeah, have some cheat meals. But these days, I believe if you choose the right diet for yourself, then you will not even need the cheat days or the cheat, mm. cheat meals. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's actually an interesting take that uh, the more you do of the get good stuff, the less you you crave for the bad stuff. Completely. And th th there's so much science. Uh, sorry for, for, for going there, but your, no, your no, gut bacteria, you your, your, yeah. your gut bacteria, they tell you what to eat. Okay. If you have an overgrowth of the gut bacteria that love to eat sugar, that love to eat processed fats, you will crave more of that. And they feed on that. So the more you eat chips, the more you want chips. But if you cut yeah. out the chips for half a year, honestly, I hate chips. If I eat them, I have the weird mouth feeling. I don't eat chips ever. I don't know. Remember when I had my last bag of chips, I just dislike them and I don't crave them at all ever. So the more you give yourself the bad stuff, the more you crave it. It sounds counterintuitive and you would think, yeah, sometimes satisfy that craving and then go back. But that's not how it works. And the other part about those cravings and cheat days is we've unlearned the real reason behind the cravings. People that always crave chocolate, they have an underlying reason for craving that chocolate. They might have a magnesium deficiency mm -hmm. because that, that's your body's signal of telling you. There's many people that come to me and they tell me I crave raw ice. Raw it's what? Like, Sorry? Raw ice. Raw ice, like they crave like what ice, raw ice, like just ice, like just the frozen water. Really? <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm sure in the community, if somebody listens to this, that there will be people relating to it. And it's craving raw ice and they, 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 they suck on ice cubes. They, they crunch ice cubes and they're like, why am I craving raw ice? Like what is going on? Mm. That's the iron deficiency. Okay. When those, when those, it's mostly women on their periods. Like when those women start getting in enough iron, if they eat a steak, if they eat any iron-based foods, red beets with vitamins, suddenly they stop craving that raw ice. So you're not really craving what your brain tells you what you're craving. Your body's actually wanting something different. You just cannot interpret the signal anymore. Yeah. So 
that's kind of my my complete take on the on the cheat meals. Okay. Food. I mean, you, our brains are also lazy, right? They always try to go the easy path. And the more you do of, do or eat certain foods, the more also we get used to it. It's the same. The more you spend time on social media, the more we get used to it. You know, it's like our brain is not like, oh, you here, let's uh, do more of the hard stuff and meditate. And But the more you do of the opposite, the easier it gets. And I think that's that's the most challenging part. At the beginning, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. For a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks to say no to something, but it will get easier. And this is, I yes. think, where you just need to have the trust. Just have the trust. And I learned from a lot of successful people and coaches and mentors. And I just, all right, I trust. I, I, I love the books from Eckhart Tolle. That's how I got into meditation. And uh, with the practice, it also got easier. And I just said, okay, let's just trust the process and uh, and give some faith and, and trust into someone who, who, who achieved that. And just... Okay, shut the fuck up, just do it. And, and, and now I can uh, meditate easily for 20, 30 minutes. And back in the days, I was like, five minutes was difficult. But still, yeah. it's still a practice. It's still sometimes hard, but, you know, it's, it is what it is. But it definitely has gotten a lot easier. I don't yeah. have to force myself. It doesn't feel like the torture that it might feel like at the beginning. Just push through. Yeah. It's, it's kind of unfair what, what you said. that In the beginning, it's so hard and you don't really know if you're doing the right thing. So you need somebody yeah. that you can trust to do the right thing. But yeah. it gets so much easier. Yeah. Like the longer you've been on this journey, it, it just gets everything gets easier. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what you choose, if it's nutrition, if it's being an entrepreneur, if it's whatever you choose, the longer you do it, the better you get at it. You get mastery after thousands of hours. Yeah. And the same goes for your nutrition. Like you will learn your body if you're really interested in it and you will be able to kind of configure it and maybe that's the the best biohack brain hack there is figuring out your own body right yeah yeah having a little bit of faith and trust this is also what it needs next to the basics and uh question a little bit the what is being portrayed on social media and mainstream i think if we want to wrap it up here and also keep in mind and this is sometimes when i see not just you but also other um, influencers that decided to go down this route to teach more about let's say a holistic health approach it's like ah it's just a scam and when he wants to promote his book or his course or his website i can tell you from my experience that you probably the people that i know the authors you're not making a penny from selling these kind of books it's just like um you make so little from it and most people that i've met like you and others they just have a genuine interest to help people because they have experienced something in their life like you with your dad it's like hey man like i just want to i go on this hero's journey and i want to make sure that nobody else has to go through experience something similar And uh, and then, you know, that's where heroes are born, like you or villains are born that just then become angry and resentful and uh, want to put the same shit onto other people. So always keep that in mind and follow the money, follow the money. If there's an interest, <laughs> if people make a lot of money from it. And, and the thing is, I don't if there's a genuine good product or supplement, someone makes a lot of money with it. Cool. I'm totally happy with that. Why not? There were so many bullshit companies and products. They make loads of money. Why shouldn't we try to make a lot of money with good products yeah. and good courses? Right? Yeah. I'm not allowed to say this, but yeah. just one fact. Athletic Greens, you get 30% commission for uh, every sale. So if, uh, if a Joe Rogan episode, uh, mm -hmm. they get uh, 30,000 bucks Joe Rogan gets per episode for Athletic Greens. What do you think about the Athletic Greens? Have you looked into it? Bullshit. <laughs> yes, yeah? completely. I saw it. I used to professionally, I used to also work in the food supplement industry and also in recipe. And I know all yeah. about that. And that recipe is, I mean, they will never sponsor me, but I don't give a fuck. What is inside? There's like five grams of fillers of some cheap pea protein. And then there's one gram of hundred different ingredients in the lowest dosages possible. Ingredients that don't even make sense together. Ingredients that, I don't know if you're a sponsor. I hope not. I'm, no, no. I hope, I hope no, you're not no. affiliate. And like, Scientifically, you will not experience any change. The the pro, the raw value of the insights is maybe around five to ten euros. I assume that the production cost of the product is like eleven euros, and mm -hmm. that's it. That's a degree, and you pay one hundred bucks for that per month. All they do is their influencer marketing. Like it's everywhere. It's on Huberman's, yeah, it's yeah. on Joe Rogan's. Every every big guy stands behind it. But if you look at the recipe, if you look what is actually inside it and what it does for you. 
it's I, I would save my money on that. I, I will break some heart and mm. get some hate for that, but I, I will stand what, by it. What do you think in general about this Huberman guy? I mean, he's promoting it, isn't it? Shouldn't yeah. he? Like, isn't he? Doesn't a little. I mean, he, he also needs to make money. I think he 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 means well, and I think he helped a lot of people with mm. all his advice on on alcohol he helped many people quit alcohol on kind of mindset like i think he teaches some good things but he should disclose more the financial interests and the financial things he gets like mm. the products he's he's pushing and he's selling and the courses and, and the people he's pushing there's a lot of money based behind it like he's a he alone as a personal brand is a million multi-million dollar business right per year yeah. so you need to always take everything um, with a grain of salt. Look at what everybody sells you. If somebody is always talking about a specific vitamin, look if he has a relationship with that. Yeah. Like, you need to always, always realize that. And especially in the supplement industry, it's all based on influencer marketing. So yeah. start to question that. Yeah. And I want to give everybody that advice. You don't need any supplement besides maybe magnesium and that's cheap, but there's no magic one pill cure that will fix you yeah. even if they promise you it won't if you take a supplement make sure that you know why you're taking it that you know why you should be taking it know it research is a little bit for yourself and then make the informed decision but if i sit here and tell you yeah you need to take whatever take this buy this i make a proprietary blend with l-theanine and promote it please question that think for yourself think critically like yeah there's what about no vitamin panacea. D? What about vitamin D with K2? Yeah, you should take it. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I, I don't have a brand, but man, that, that thing... It's probably one of the few that is like, if you would make like a mandatory list, like, hey, we have the magnesium, vitamin D that's it. with that's K2. It. Yeah, That's it. Th those are these three I recommend to every single person mm. taking them. And fun fact, if you want to really absorb your vitamin D, you need magnesium. Like the, 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 all the pathways vitamin D activates is based on magnesium. So you should yeah. take these together. And the vitamin K, what it does is it prevents you getting atherosclerosis from the vitamin D. So it's like a trifecta. You should always take these three supplements together. And unless you're in the sun every day and you're eating a massively magnesium-rich diet, then you're deficient in those things. And they will improve your health long-term. Vitamin okay. D for corona, like that was the, the magic, one of the magic bullets you should have been taken all this time was vitamin D. The studies are there they were just not promoted the studies the science is there you can read up all about it can like you maybe send me some some links afterwards and then yes, we can put it yes. in the description as well yes yeah. yes yes for people if they're interested to read about yeah. it mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I like that idea so that's kind of the the thing with supplements yeah most of them are bullshit but if then people tell you actively you shouldn't take them and rather take another thing maybe look into why why that is happening yeah. yeah, but with magnesia, isn't it, or magnesium, I don't even know what's the plural in English, that you also need a certain quality. Otherwise, like the cheap ones you get in the local stores, in the supermarket, the body can't really absorb it, even though if it has the right amount of magnesium in it, that it needs it's, to be a certain quality so the body can absorb it properly. Otherwise, you just pee it or poop it out. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point. And honestly, you should just avoid one magnesium form that is magnesium oxide. And magnesium oxide is the one that is all over mm -hmm. any retail store, grocery store. There are so many different forms. There's magnesium bislets in a trionet. There's magnesium nitrate. There's all kind of magnesiums. They're all fine and they all are a little bit better at one thing than the other thing. Bisglitzinat is the best for sleeping. Trionat is the best for the heart. Like citrate is the best for the gut. They all have a little bit of a difference, but they're all in general fine. Okay. Just avoid the oxide. Just avoid okay. the oxide, then you're already quite good. Fabian, thank you so much. I know that your cam or your phone is about to die. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's good to wrap it up. Can't uh, more. <laughs> I learned a lot. Um, so I have a lot of things to to with all supplements. I have actually a huge stack on supplements. So I'm going to I'm going to optimize there a little bit more. Uh, once again, thank you so much for tuning in here today. Um, we put if you guys want to learn more about Fabi, we put we put everything below. But I think Instagram is right now where people can probably learn the most from you. I highly recommend the reels. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> very very good content really enjoy watching it and then i wish you nothing but great health for you and also from what i've heard small family is it your firstborn or already second 
it's my it's my first one the second will also be be there one day <laughs> i'm growing thank you very much ben. It, was a, it was a pleasure talking to you i really and maybe it. you also we keep an eye on the comments so if every one of you guys has a question about something i know we've also used a lot of terms for certain um uh, for certain supplements or chemicals or whatever it is um we will try to also add the caption so if there's something you would like to to order for yourself then you know what you're getting Thank you, Fabian. Great. Thank uh, you. See you soon. I wish you good health, everybody. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.